So sure, offer up all the ideas of what more Harris could be doing in these few remaining days before the election. At the same time, it's actually you, the American voter, who needs to step up. Truly look at the choice before us. Listen to Donald Trump's speeches. Truth over lies, democracy versus fascism, or something like that looks like it. Your interests rather than revenge for Donald Trump's ego. The rule of law versus Donald Trump's lawlessness, kindness versus cruelty. If you are concerned about those things and are worried Harris could very well lose, well, do something. Get to work. As Barack Obama said in Pittsburgh last night, don't just sit back and hope for the best. Vote and help get out the vote. If we care about this experiment called America, the search for a more perfect union has, that has the possibility of being ever more perfect every day. Don't despair. Don't be discouraged. I mean, you can be, but don't just be. Don't just criticize. And women, I'm talking to you because this is about getting back our 50 years of rights so our daughters can be safe at the doctor. We know better. We know better than to wait for someone else to get this job done. We're women. We always come through for each other. So let's not miss this opportunity to step up for women, for families across the United States of America. And if you're frightened by the option of Donald Trump, don't just talk about all the things you think the Harris camp is doing wrong. Get to work. I know women will. Lauren Leader. I have to admit, watching the left's meltdown, MSN, BS, MSM, all these people on, ooh, it is the highlight of my day. I ain't gonna lie, it's one of them things that I wake up and look forward to, just like those uh, social justice warrior videos we used to do back in the day, but of course, you know, we got punished for that. <laughs> Anywho, Kamala, they're trying to convince us to keep going for Kamala, and they're trying to induce more panic into the American people. Uh, obviously, the responsibility is in our hands, and we do have to go to the polls, but they're trying to do it using the guilt tactic. Hey, you know, uh, women, we got to stick together. <laughs> we got to. <laughs> remember, these, this, as somebody said in the comments that I've seen, uh, this is coming from a woman whom... Uh, <laughs> They can't even define who a woman is. Oh, my God. That's nasty work right there to try to sit there and media induce you with guilt in order to sway you in order to uh, and uh, uh, other than trying to just, you know, present the facts and give you the options and tell you, hey, let's make your choice. Nah, they like, hey, this is the choice you got. The threat to democracy whom almost got killed a couple times. Oh, why did I say that? Anyhow, at the hands of whatever um yeah and then you have uh kamala la 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 how is this not an uh in kind ad contribution someone says someone says uh wonder what will people like her do when trump wins uh unhinged uh, they make a perfect couple <laughs> cry more someone says it's actually quite something to watch they'll melt down and bring forth these desperate pleas that's exactly what we're seeing now the view host thinks that black men in particular who vote for trump are ridiculous and crazy now this guy's response perfect we've got to reach those ridiculous crazy black men that did vote for trump so let me get this straight if i vote for a party that can't define what a woman is i'm no longer ridiculous or crazy if i vote for a party that wants boys in my daughter's sports and restrooms i'm no longer ridiculous or crazy if i vote for a party that thinks they can pander to me using kente cloths and hot sauce i'm no longer crazy if i vote for a party that has done nothing but destroy my community for the last 60 years and open the borders in order to replace my vote and destroy my community further i'm no longer crazy if i vote for the party that wants Wanted to keep me from voting, wanted to keep Jim Crow, wanted to keep slavery, the party of the Klan, I'm no longer crazy. And I'm no longer crazy or ridiculous if I vote for the candidate who's been in the office as vice president for the last three and a half years and admitted to having a large part in pushing the harmful policies that have hurt my country, who can't answer basic questions and is quite possibly the worst candidate in American history, says she's going to bring change while at the same time admitting there's nothing she changed about the last three and a half years and made us the laughing stock of the world. And you think I'm the crazy one. I think it's crazy you think I should vote for a candidate based on skin color rather than how their policies will affect my life. It's pretty sick. Not only is it sick, it's quite insulting, honestly, to sit there and quite literally tell me indirectly that we're looking at the same information and I don't possess the capabilities of being able to process said information and create my own conclusion. Instead, I need to mirror uh, my thoughts based on my skin color alone. 
yeah that's reducing me to community think that's reducing me to you know not being able to have independent thought i don't i don't understand i don't get the logic in the left in that right um they talk about freedoms and taking away freedoms and things of that nature but you're quite literally already doing that now charlie kirk he posted this um if you don't know trump's civil fraud cake uh conviction i'm sorry resulting in nearly a half billion dollar judgment could get overturned by the ny appellate division here's nearly two minutes of a panel of five justices absolutely exonerating um uh, uh letitia james team of lawyers i'm sorry y'all i had to remember how to say her name i forgot underneath all these questions the question of mission creep as 6312 morphed into something that it was not meant to do. All the defendants repeatedly violated- Ms. Vail, can you identify any previous case which the attorney general sued under executive law 6312 to upset a private business transaction that was between equally sophisticated partners? And it was using- I'm sorry, but what's being described sounds an awful lot like a potential commercial dispute between private actors. I mean, you've got two really sophisticated parties in which no one lost any money. The case that you cite involved where there was damage to consumers, damage to the marketplace. You've got a, a scheme to get unsophisticated consumers to take out home loans. You got a collapse of Lehman Brothers. You don't have anything like that here. And that's, that's something you must address because there has to be some limitation on what the attorney general can do in inter interfering in these private uh, transactions, as Justice Friedman said, that where people don't claim harm. So what is the limiting principle? The immense penalty in this case is troubling. So how do you tether um, the amount that was assessed by Supreme Court to the harm that was caused here where the parties left these transactions happy about how things went down? Historical backdrop to this law, how do we draw a line or at least put up some guardrails to know when the AG is operating well within her broad admittedly broad sphere of 6, 6312 and when she is is going into an area that wasn't intended for her jurisdiction at the end of the day america we're just tired of y'all trying to push kamala harris on to us we know better the attorney general of new york that is uh somebody said claims unlimited jurisdiction to steal president trump's private property based on pure emotions and no victims whatsoever she's basically just trying to take everything that she can uh from donald trump with no plausible cause whatsoever i mean both parties literally left happy i think that's a spider I, any home anyone who has a little bit of common sense knows that this fraud case will be overturned even in a liberal appellate court in New York for sure. Um, but the process is the punishment uh, and the process is gonna be even more punishment for everybody on the left once November hits and yeah, it was always meant to, can't even say that. It was always meant to, to um mess with november and if trump wins you know that uh leticia james should honestly be looked into indicted and checked up into i'm just saying we all know that kamala harris tried to pull the whole medical record stunt to try to make it seem like donald trump uh, is incompetent to be able to run as president again but uh we all know that ain't the case we actually had donald trump in office we actually had Kamala Harris in the office, or have Kamala Harris in the office. Now, Scott Jennings on CNN, he torches Kamala's Trump's hot in his medical records tactic. Check this out. I think, I think a couple things. Number one, if I were Harris, I wouldn't be leaning too heavily into who's hiding what kind of medical conditions of people who are or want to be the president, given her role in lying about the condition of Joe Biden for the last four years. That's number one. Number two, I, I don't think this works for her. I think I'm, I'm back in the same bucket I was earlier. You're not selling your own candidacy. You're punching Donald Trump in the same way every other Democrat we've ever heard from for the last eight, nine years has punched this guy. That's not the problem with your campaign. We've heard all the attacks on Trump. If she cannot sell her own candidacy any better than just punching on him, I'm for her, if I were in her camp, I just don't know what's going to be enough. That's my view. But but here's Scott Jennings on CNN. 
That man, definitely a hero. And I'm glad that he addressed this whole medical uh, tactic that uh, Kamala Harris is trying to campaign with now. You, we're not concerned with that. If anything, we want a drug test in IQ. But anyhow, we're not concerned with that. The American people, we're concerned with the border. You know what I'm saying? We're concerned with groceries. We're concerned with jobs and being able to maintain having a savings. You know what I mean? And I want y'all to see this clip from last night. A black mom from a Democrat voting family in Pennsylvania just told Trump that her top concern is the border. Black jobs being stolen by illegals and super high prices. And as usual, Trump gave her the complete and detailed response as opposed to Kamala Harris. Shout out to uh, Be Hizzy Tweets. Go ahead. My name's Angelina, and I was raised in a Philadelphia Democrat household, a union household. As a, blended, uh, as a mother of a blended family, my top issues are the same issues that face all Americans. Illegal immigration hurts black Americans. Inflation hurts black Americans. And dangerous cities hurt black Americans. Like my fellow Americans, my grocery bill has not gone down. Everything is still so very expensive. What steps will your, your administration take to help American families suffering from this inflation? So, you know, it's such a great question in the sense that people don't think of grocery. You know, it sounds like not such an important word when you talk about homes and everything else, right? But more people tell me about grocery bills where the price of bacon, the price of lettuce, the price of tomatoes, they tell me. Uh, and we're going to do a lot of things. You know, our farmers aren't being treated properly. And we had a deal with China, and it was a great deal. I never mentioned it because once COVID came in, I said that was a bridge too far because I had a great relationship with President Xi. And he's a fierce man, and he's a man that likes China, and I understand that. But we had a deal, and he was perfect on that deal. $50 billion he was going to buy. We were doing numbers like you wouldn't believe for the farmer. But the farmers are very badly hurt. The farmers in this country, we're going to get them straightened out. We're going to get your prices down. But you asked another question about safety and also about black population jobs and Hispanic population, in particular those two. So when millions of people pour into our country, they're having a devastating effect on black families and Hispanic families more than any others. I think it's going to spread to a lot of other places. I think it's going to spread to unions. I think unions are going to have a big problem because, uh, you know, employers are just not going to pay the price. They're going to, and it's going to be, it's a very bad thing that's happening. So they're coming in. Many are coming in from jails and prisons and mental institutions, insane asylums. That's like, you know, a step above, right? A sane asylum. And whenever I go, uh, Hannibal Lecter, you know what I'm talking about. They always go the fake news. That's a lot of fake news back there, too. But, They always mention, you know, it's a way of demeaning. They just say, Hannibal Lecter, why would he mention? Well, you know why? Because he was a sick puppy. And we have sick puppies coming into our country. I figure that's a lot. That's better than wasting a lot of words. You just say, Hannibal Lecter, we don't want him. But, but they always sort of say, why would he say that? I do it for a lot of reasons. But I do it because we are allowing some very bad people into our country. And they're coming as terrorists. You know, you saw the other day. Last month, they had the record number of terrorists. I had a month, and I love Border Patrol. Did you see they gave me a full endorsement two days ago? Border Patrol. The Border Patrol, and they're, they're great. And you know, they want to do their job. They don't want to let these people come in. They look at them, they can tell, they can, they can look at somebody, say good, bad. They say what's coming into our country now, it's having a huge negative impact on black families and on Hispanic families, and ultimately on everybody. And we're going to close that border so tight, it's going to be closed. And, and I said, the two things I'm going to do, first, we're going to close that border, and people are going to come in. You want people to come in. We need people to come in. People are going to come into our country legally. You know, it's so unfair. You have people that are waiting on a system, on a line, and they've been waiting on this line, you know how long, for years, 10 years, 12 years, and they study and they take tests. And, they, and then people come. I actually say, why don't you just go on the, just come on across. I tell people that it's terrible, right? I said, go out. You're incredible. They say, what can I do to speed up the process? I say, you know what? Go to the southern border. I'll see you on the other side. 
It's so unfair. But we're going to have them come in legally. You have to see what they have to do. They take tests on, you know, who was the first one here? What date was this? What does 1776 mean? What is, all this stuff. And these other people are coming in and they're affecting the school systems and they're affecting the hospital system. I mean, if you take a look at what's going on in Springfield, Ohio, a town of 50,000 people, they've just added 32,000 people, illegal immigrants, and we're not going to put up with it and we're going to take care of your costs are going to come down and you're not going to have a problem with uh, because the biggest problem and I'm hearing it from black people and to a lesser extent right now, but it'll be the same Hispanic people. And I'll tell you what, our poll numbers have gone through the roof with black and Hispanic have gone through the roof. And I like that. I like that. I like that. So we're going to take care of it. You will be, I'll tell you, if everything works out, if everybody gets out and votes on January 5th or before, you know, it used to be, you'd have a date. Today, you can vote two months before, probably three months after. They don't know what the hell they're doing. But we're going to straighten it all out. We're going to straighten that out, too. We're going to straighten our election process out, too. That's going to be important, also. So thank you very much, darling. Thank we're going to get it straight. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. This makes me think of that Meet the Press interview that we watched uh, yesterday, was it? With uh, Kristen Welker and uh, how speaker of the house mike johnson claimed that i mean yeah he claimed that mike donald trump's medical records were irrelevant basically because his health is on display every single day he's everywhere you see him out he's working non-stop he said it's to some effect like that and you can see he's clearly out here doing that man he's really for the american people we all are clearly being affected um, and I'm glad that this woman understood black jobs in the context that Donald Trump used it versus uh, the way left wing media decided to run with it. You know, I'm, I'm glad that that happened, too. But uh, somebody said just got finished watching the town hall on YouTube. I must say Trump nails every question every time. It was OK. Not as bad as Kamala. I actually saw a lot. I didn't feel like he fully answered it. Uh, to be honest, I'm an independent. OK. Uh, oh, uh, is she the one, too, who eats neighbors, cats and dog? He never listened to the question. He never answered the question instead of uh, mattering off into political monologues. Someone says she's been a Republican for years. Somebody says this is simply factually untrue and simply not happening. So you can see that there's a lot of, you know, People who aren't favoring Donald Trump in this clip under these in these comments. The comment section is not passing a vibe check, uh, but black job, right? People always say, you know, what is a black job? That is a black job. And then if he don't say anything about jobs for black people or black jobs, it's going to be why he didn't say anything about us. We never satisfied. Huh? 